as he prefers to be called, Alan Ruder, um, someone whose um, life in the rabbinate in the States really spans a full, full spectrum, and now here in Eric's Israel continues to teach in so many um, forms, and always is for me, every time I'm privileged to hear, study from him, I come away with new insights and new understandings. So, Thank you. Bravo, Ty. We have a lot to cover. We're going to study two versions of Orthodox Judaism. One is halakha, and one is culture. One, the halakha version you find in the Rambam's introduction to the Mishnah Torah. I took his introduction and shortened it to the pure essence of what the Rambam say halakha is. This is my Judaism. At the end of the Rambam, there's a comment by a gentleman called the Ra'avad. Some people mispronounce it, the Ra'avid. <laughs> <laughs> there are no yuds in the word Ra'avad. And we're going to see why his opposition disagrees with him. Then we're going to see a latter-day saintly version of that in the writings of Rabbi Herzl Schechter and his concept of what he calls Misora. So that's where we're going to go. You have two different versions of orthodoxy here. Ramam says, Kol should be tenu Moshe Sinai, at Sinai, ni tenu. They were given with their interpretation. In other words, Tosh and Tosh starts at Sinai, Mi Sinai. Now, if you look at number, the end of paragraph five, Mi Sinai could be Zman or Makom. From Sinai could be the moment of Sinai or the place of Sinai. That man is very important for those of us who study historically as well as dialectically. And from the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, number three, no one wrote a kibur, a composition, a standalone text, but they wrote perushim. No one wrote a kibur until Rabbeinu HaKadosh wrote the Mishnah, who's a kibur, Shemel Amadin Otoba Rabbim. They taught this Torah text in public. He wrote a book that you put in your hand. In biblical Israel, you don't find people quoting books. Maybe they had a Torah, but no one was reading it because it wasn't written down in a way that was published. They weren't reading from the Torah every day. Even though there's no evidence that the Gemara and Megillah was put into place before by a Cheney. And what did they do? They wrote this Gemara from the Shmuot, from the traditions they had. And they used Midash Torah Nidrash Pahem and Vahizkimu 4B, Alehem Beitin Hagadol, the Supreme Court of Israel. Jewish law says, you do what the Supreme Court says it says. The Torah is an incomplete document in that it cannot deal with every conceivable issue. We will be reading the Torah every millennium, once a millennium. We read it once a year. We don't, that's because it's a finite text. There are gaps. The Beitin Hagadol fills the, fills the gaps. And if it doesn't fill the gaps, what do you do? What do you want? Because laws do three things. They command, they forbid, and they're silent. When they're silent, there's a word for that in Hebrew. Anyone know? <laughs> Mutar. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of Isur. You have it, it's called Isur Veheter, not Isur Vemebi. Okay. Number seven. Every generation has its bait in. They, that bait in makes the decision. They have three kinds of rules in rabbinic law. Takano, positive commands, over which we make a bracha. Asher kiddush hanam mitzvotavetzivano. And you have gezero, don't do things. Like, don't wear shotness. Don't say lashon harba. Don't say bad jokes. I buy that all <laughs> And then you have what are called isurim. No, no. And then they have hanhagot, in hagim. Those are positive acts for which you don't make a bracha. For example, kibbut arava, hitting the arava on Shoshana Rabbah, or fasting Erev Pesach and Erev Sukkah, Erev Purim. It's not in the Gemara as a fast day that's obliged. It was a minhaj that was accepted by Paul Yisrael. Though the men in this room all wear kippot. It's minhaj for synagogue, Nidvashit before Yisrael. I got into trouble once in one of my shuls because I commented the Ramah said it's not a requirement on the street. About the Ramah. I was once asked, Will you spend your nights looking up this stuff? I said, sure. It's more fun than t- TV. Okay. The Zekinim Shaba Oto Gamaru Shahadim Kapu. The Bedin, the rabbis of the Bedin decide the law the way they want. What happens if there's no situation occurs? The Bedin and Gadol can't make a mistake because they have allowed to say what a mistake, to say what the Torah requires. The Torah requires that we have to pray and read and pray. How do you have to pray? The Chazal will tell you how. 
you, uh, the Torah says you should remember the Shabbat. Be very good words. The, the rabbis invented words. They're called Kiddush. Now, you could, is the Mitzvah to, to say Kiddush o- only for Shabbos? Of remembering Shabbos. Is it only for Shabbos? No, if you see a fat cow, say that cow I want for Shabbos, or I want to have that piece of macaroni and cheese for Shabbos <laughs> afternoon. That's your choice. When you do Kiddush, you're rem- m- mentioning Shabbos. And when you say the Shmiz Moshir Shel Yom, you're remembering Shabbos. And Shabbos is not a time bound mitzvah. Are women obliged to say Kiddush? Can a woman say Kiddush for a man? If a man says, says, he says, Kaddish Shabbat in Shul, and the woman hasn't prayed Maram, what's a bigger mitzvah to say Kaddish? Say Kiddush. Are women Chayavot to Kiddush Hashem? That's why women can say Kaddish, as we just heard, without a man answering. Because the law doesn't permit it. And you have to ask, what is the principle of the law? Not what you're used to doing, not what's familiar to you. What is the law of familiarity in Aloha? Adio chapter 2, paragraph 2. Lo ra'inu eno ra'i. You didn't see it? Get better glasses. Although they're expensive. And then you have the, the end of the Gemara, the end of 7. The time. Ravina and Ravashi ate the Chavrehem and their colleagues. So, Gidolei Chachmei Yisrael. The last time that a Gadol Batoru who had authority because he's a Gadol was a rabbi called Rav Ashi. He had a tag team back with Ravina the first. Ravina the second came afterwards. See? <laughs> After Rav Ashi, no more apodiktiko la halacha. No more harah. In Bukhmetsiya 86a, it says, Ravina and Rav Ashi say harah. The people who can invent laws, legislate laws, ended with Rav Ashi. We're all equal after that. You can't disagree with the Gemara. But if it doesn't say no in the Gemara, no the law. Now, what's the most famous example when we disobey that? Hakol Shokhatim. Anyone can shout. Hakol Shokhatim. With anything that works, you can shout. And the Gemara answers, La'atuye Nashim. That would mean Kedusha Pita. In the Middle Ages, that law was abolished. The Reform Movement began in Germany a thousand years before it began in Germany. <laughs> Totsfoot said women can check but they quote a guy who says you can't because we never saw it. Mm. the Shulchan Aruch in Beit Yosef says that's not an argument the fact that you didn't see it doesn't mean it's Asur you have to show me where in the Gemara it's Asur Jews were from those days were from Missouri you've got to show me Alan Harris at Harvard wrote a book called why did you say that why did you do that that's the always kosher question and these were the last guys who had the right to be called Gedolin. We talk about Sniyot and modesty. Is there a more modest term than Gedolin for a rabbi? <laughs> uh, by that? <laughs> Overweight. <laughs> and, there, and since everybody's equal after the Gemara 9, the Fikah, En kofin anche medina zo, min hoka min hag medina achere. You can't tell the, the Jews who live in Baca to live like the Pasch in the way they do in Talbiyo or Talbiyo. It's a different kahila. Every shul is his own kahila. You should be able to do what you want, as long as it doesn't disagree with the Gemara. And the people who disagree with that is called the Rabbanut Harashid. <laughs> 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 I am the Puyah of a Koyah that did to tell jokes. <laughs> and I'm a strict constructionist, as opposed to reconstructionist. Okay. All the rabbis who came into the Gemara. We're all called geniuses. That's called hyperbole. <laughs> we all, everyone's equal. Your authority as a rab is equal. No one is higher than anyone else unless you see to them that authority. I don't recall the rabbi, I don't know if having anyone see to them the authority here. You know what it says about an evil king? Melech lo dan ve'en daninoto. You don't behave according to the law, they don't treat you as a keeping the law. We are in rebellion. I went to school in the 1960s. Okay, so what does Rambam say? I read it on Kodesh Baruch Hu. And my mind. Now where I can see you, I have to use his mind. A mind? A terrible thing to wait. <laughs> what did we just say? I have, uh, I have the right. What, what is Bina? And Da'at means you know the facts. Bina knows you can compare them and know the difference. Seiko, Haskel, 
Chokhmah is the ability to take those facts and use them to make Pesach. A rabbi who gets Rabu he knows what the facts are. A rabbi is Yoredeya, means you are authorized to make Pesach. Now, the next person we're going to study is a Rabbi Tzvi, also known as Herschel Schechter, who disagrees with this Rambam. He says, although it says on your smicha that you are Magiyah Lahora, you have their smicha. See, right? It says, Magiyah Lahora. Rabbi Schechter says, you're not Magiyah Lahora. Now, why is he saying something? He's not been kind in the midst of Mikvah Schechter. I didn't ask him, and he probably will talk to me anyway. So it's okay. <laughs> in other words, you don't have that right because you're not a daughter. When you get the ordination of Yorei Yorei with Yisro Vehezer, that means you can make a decision in Yisro Vehezer. If you can make it logically to the point where they can't refute you, that's all you have to do in halacha. Why do, what's the difference between Rishonim and Achronim? In around the 1500s, they started printing presses. So they put Rashi and Tosos on the page, and you read the, to, the to, text of the Talmud in the prism of Rashi and Tosos. Two Ashkenazi generations in the high Middle Ages. If you put the Rambam and the Rif, you have a very different Torah, like the Rambam, where the Rabbina and Rav Hashem Sofara, and after that, it's a free-for-all. I have to convince you, I can't lord it over you. However, I have to do, I have to do what Beit Hillel does, I have to show the opposition. So we're going to see what Rav Shechter says. And I give the footnote, it's from TorahWeb.org, special, R-S-C-H, is Rabbi Shechter. The Torah does not provide, provide simanim, the distinction between kosher and non-kosher animals. So, the, the, rather, a list of non-kosher fowl was given. <coughs> these are trait. What is it? If these are trait, and these in English is called a demonstrative pronoun, means these. It also means not that. Elu mitziot shalom. The elu chayav lahakrit. Or elu tzrichim lahodot. These people are ba'at tzrichim lahodot. Poor people have to bench gom. It doesn't say elu. It's not in that list. Maybe you shouldn't bench Goma, because it's not in the list. Elu means this. Ze Eli Mianve. And one must uh, act out of Mesorah. But the Torah Shavakai didn't say that. That is a chidush of Rabbi Shechter. You need a Mesorah? When the Gemara says, Eno Fi Nelva Mesorah, that means if you don't know what the Simanim, but you have a tradition, that's okay. But if you know it, if you see the Simanim and you check, point to Rabbim, that's kosher. Point to Shulchanara, that's kosher. Ashkenazim aren't happy unless they aren't happy. So <laughs> they say we got to be strict. Regarding fish, no Masora is required at all. That's not entirely true. I studied with a gentleman at Yeshiva University called Moses Tenley, who thinks swordfish is trade. And then I knew a guy called Rabbi Isaac Klein, who said kosher is kosher. What's the answer? In the Mediterranean basin, where they had swordfish, they said it's kosher. In Danzig, in the a Polish corridor, where it was frozen all year, they didn't have swordfish. They it was it's a cutting. I'm not positing, I'm not going to possibly this my teacher. You know what I think, <laughs> if I think at all. Okay. The shot in his commentary to Yoridea, the shot. He, he, he may be related to Rabbi Menachem Meshach, I don't know. <laughs> he says, he meant it's eating a kosher behemoth that his Mesorah is needed. <laughs> wow. You need it, in other words, what the Torah says is not good enough. You need a Mesorah too. Where does the Torah respond to that? In chapter 13, verse 1, Deuteronomy, it says, don't add and don't subtract to the Torah. That means the Abish got the Torah right the first try. Hold in one. Okay. It's, although the Talmud gives him money to determine whether any given animal is a behemoth or a chaya, the Shah recorded a chumrah that a Mesora is needed. Menachan Emile. Where do you get that from? Or where do you get that from? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Chazun East, the Aradea, Simon 11. The, it says the Chokhla Sodom, Rajab Dandar, understood the Shah. To have said that it's not only necessary for Mesorah to identify an animal as a chayyeh or a behemoth, but to allow one to eat an animal at all, the minhag requires a Mesorah. The minhag requires a Mesorah. If the smith exam I did with Oscar, the late Rabbi Oscar Fessman of Base Members of Torah in Chicago, he asked me, What do you eat on Thanksgiving? <laughs> I say, Hodu Lashem. <laughs> I don't eat fowl because it's fowl. <laughs> But I, it's kosher. I said, I do Thanksgiving. He said, why are you Thanksgiving? I knew what he wanted, because I read up on it. I didn't know you were Thanksgiving. I said, it's not us, sir, and I have to have uh, respect for uh, my record, which is Linda. I said, the remote said, he smiled happily, fed me dinner, and gave me smeeman. <laughs> that was my first one. Now, that's a problem here. Do we have a right to add to the Torah? 
Are you allowed to make a chumrah? Laharkikat of Me'avera? Yes. The Torah says it's kosher, and you are kosher in the Torah. That's not a nice thing to do. The only thing the left keeps the, doesn't keep the law. The right gets it wrong too. Uh, okay. And he says, uh, if I'm a rabbi in Eretz Yisroel, I connect correct it. He wrote Yisroel. The word Yisroel is based on when two contiguous vowels. That's called the diphthong. That's called the simulation. You should never say Yisroel. You can say Yisroel b'tap Hashem or Yisroel b'tap Hashem. But don't say Yisroel. But that's against the halakha of the Okay. He came up with an original idea to permit Kohanim to go to medical school, to come in contact with dead people. But Moshe finds and published the tube, but pointing out the rabbi's suggestion could have been implemented years ago, but never was. Is that a legal argument? That's from Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. In other words, this is something, tradition is what we do. Tradition is what we have seen. It's not what's allowed in the book. Is it book culture? Protect, when God gave a book, he said, this is a book that you have. And you can read it. And you can know what's right or wrong. And when the Rambam wrote his Mishnah Torah, you have at least an avenue to figure out what's Mishnah Torah. I don't have to listen to the rabbi if I think he's giving hot air. If I'm a lady and I say, I want to check, you can't check. Lubavitch your Rebbe said, women can't check because they'll faint. Well, if you faint, you're puzzled for two. If you don't faint, it's mutter. <laughs> what's the issue? It offends your sensibility. Well, God didn't give you sensibilities to Israel. God gave a Torah to Israel, is what it says. Okay. As a matter of halacha, rules which have been accepted for centuries cannot be overturned. Oh yeah? How many people come to Eretz Yisrael keep one day or two days of Yom Tov? The real law is you keep one day in Eretz Yisrael, period, whether you're going back or not. Because that's a din, the Obaisen. The Afka Sroka made a mistake. That doesn't mean Beis Yosef is a bad man. To understand that he did what he did without a computer. He had more in his brain without a computer than I have in my CD-ROM. My CD-ROM is pretty big. Brain is it, but the CDM is. Even make a mistake. Or, let me throw this at you. Are you allowed to pray to angels? Not Charlie. You're allowed to pray to angels. <laughs> if you're Zobayat la, la, to the Michael, El Saragadol, Michael the Archangel, you If you say, Baruchuni Lashalom to an angel and believe it, mm-hmm. you're not a monotheist. Or, if you want to greet Shabbos and Malkus, so coming in the back of the shul, you turn your tukas to the R and Kodesh, mm-hmm. is that something that we do in Orthodox shuls? Because Makubalim went outside to see the sun set in the west. And according to Abu Dhan, you turn around at the end of the Chadodi to greet the mourners. Because that's the mitzvah of the Akhla Riyacha Kamoka. What we do is very problematic. I was once asked by a certain rabbi, why don't I make a simis? And I said, I'm retired and my wife will get out of at me. <laughs> <laughs> and she's sitting here, so she's over. Okay. Now we know the halacha can always be very flexible, this Rosh Hashanah. And he's right. His halacha is very flexible. The agenda for flexibility is what we saw in Arabic, Anand Rizal. <laughs> the Moseche Soferim, which is not canonized, but it's in the it's, Gaoni said, the Torah Shema wasn't written down, so nothing should be etched in stone. But after Ravashi, it's kind of black and white. Ravashi says, Ravina well, Ravashi, it's halacha, it's halacha, and we don't compromise. If it's not written in the halacha of Ravina and Ravashi, you've got to have a very good reason to do it differently. In, uh, in Baghdad, they started to stop writing subis on karka, but they didn't have karka. So sometimes rules change. Nobody in their right mind is going to say, you can't give an organ to a non-Jew. If you want to get, you're going to give. And it's, that's a pikuach nefesh issue. So you got to use your head. That's why you, it's, it's a choshe mishpat, it's called ma'aseh choshe. You've got to think about it. Now, Chavetz Chaim reversed many and said, Pesachim of the Shulchan Aruch. That's true. It's, he adds two words, yesh lahachmir, lahachmir. The Shulchan Aruch wasn't from enough. For an example, according to Jewish law, if you have a pipe pot and you have fleshing dishes in it and you have milking dishes in it and you put soap in it, what does the Shulchan Aruch say? Is it kosher or not kosher? Then the Shulchan Aruch. Anybody remember? Then is in Yoridei 95, if you put soap in soap of the water, you can clean milk and fleshing dishes together. No one knows that because they we have to get your finishes to make exam. You do what you do after every test, you forget it. <laughs> Well, I did it a little later in life, so I didn't have the time to forget it again. 
And I went to, wrote that in a uh, community newspaper, and a very famous Rob came and yelled at me, where'd you get that from? I said, you're already in 95. <laughs> we don't pass in that way. I said, great, tell your shul that the father of the shul was a shagin's gomer, and you think, and this is why. But tell them the truth and give them the facts, and let them gay, leave them alone. The law is etched in ink, if not in stone. If you're no taint, Tom if you don't taste it, if it tastes soapy, the only person who can use that is a kid who said dirty words. <laughs> now, is this set of law? Now, we have two rabbis I've been studying re recently called the Minfa Salutzer Shapira, the Munch HaShirov, and Moses Sofer uh, from Presbyterian. They both had two interesting halakha principles. They both believed that Kadosh Asur the Torah, innovation is forbidden in Torah. You're not allowed to sit together when I give a shir because we never saw that before. Oh, I did actually. I saw it in the base on Mikdash on Yom Kippur mm. when they were reading the Torah. Mixed standing. You can't sit in Harabai. They were standing together. That's what the Gemara says. And we, I, when it comes to the Gemara, I apply the Mr. T rule. What does Mr. T rule say? Believe it. <laughs> okay. They believe that Kadosh has served in the Torah. They also believe minhag mevatel halacha. Now, how those two fit together, I haven't figured it out yet. But if I do, they're going to give me cross Israel for halacha. Uh, <laughs> I can't figure that out. What they really are doing is saying we use the halachic literature to keep the community together. Mimetic culture is how we live as religious Jews. The commands of God become secondary. The ways of our tradition which what we see for our ancestors is Ikar. We preserve that at all costs, even at Isur. Those of you who know me, make, I, I, make, I use the, uh, meta, the, the meta halakhic principle of be careful or what you do, what ask, you'll get it. Because I always tell people that you're not allowed to dance or clap on Shabbos and Yantu. Because that's what the Gemara basis says. The Mukhachar says we do it anyway. I mean, you can't speak Hebrew because Hebrew is too holy to speak. But you can clap and dance on Shabbos and Yom Tov. When the Gemara says, you're bigger than Rabin and Ravashi. Well, if you're bigger than Rabin and Ravashi, then I'm bigger than you because you're not following the Torah Shabbat Mr. Sofer and Mr. Shapiro. Modern Orthodox Jews have to know the sources. The Dama Lahashiv, L'chokmet L'chokomet. Now, Rabbi Schechter says, we're created in the We have to follow the cell. However, it means you go the way God tells you to go and have good character traits. What are good character traits? How do you want God to pray? You have mitas ha-histatrus. You have to keep, you should be obscene but not hurt. In other words, you should be quiet and listen to us. Did Abraham listen to God that way? Did, are you allowed to argue with God? Abraham said, Did you get yelled at for that? Not that I checked. Going to Abbas the Rabbi Nassim, he passed the test by saying no to God, by arguing with God. When Moshe Rabbeinu was yelled at after the Korach incident, when 250 people died, he says to God, you give me, you give me a hard time again. It's like I said when I was teaching in Hill Yeshiva. One kid misbehaves, they all get detention. <laughs> they said, Rabbi Yudah, you're not fair. I said, you're right. <laughs> Then he has zeal for Torah, you know, in, in, in his article forbidding women prayer groups, which I'm attempting to refute at this time, I'm not finished, uh, just be usher, something has to be usher. And if women prayer groups do nothing that's usher, there's a word for it in Greek, it's called mutter. <laughs> now you have a right to say, I don't like it on policy grounds. And a rob has a right to do that. But you have to be honest, this is not wise, inappropriate in this community. But you can't say someone who does it did wrong, unless you can show me the Gemara they violated. My son was once asked, can I dance with the Torah on Simcha's Torah? He said, no, it's not allowed. The men are doing it. He said, that's not allowed either. <laughs> okay. The Gadol HaTorah that we have today follows Rabbi Shekhar's quote of Tosvot that says, it's the Gadol HaDor. Ram Gadol HaDor was the first among equals in the base in Hagorah. You're not bigger or better because of anybody else. Until we get to the Rambam. Now let's go back to the Rambam. The very last paragraph, 12. Where did Rabbi Shechter get a sheep from? He says, the Rambam Savar the Takein Velo He intended to fix and didn't fix. Or in modern Hebrew, he intended to make a reform and didn't reform. 
כי עזב דרך כל המחברים, אשר היו לפניו. He didn't do like everyone else. He didn't follow the way we did in the past. Neither did Avram Avinu, neither did Moshe Rabbeinu. Are we required to do what the past tells us we did in the past? If we would, we'd all be wearing kafiyas. Kafiyas is the same word as kippah. Kaf, kaf, yod, yod, hey. Kafiyah and kippah is the same word. If we did like our ancestors, we would wear kafiyas today, not kippah. They saw their predecessors and they said the name of the people whom they got their halakha from. Ramam did that in the introduction. He listed all the Gedol Hador. Because Allah doesn't follow the Gadol Hador, it follows the Sanhedrin, the vote of the collective plenum, not the godless of the individual charismatic. When you speak as a charismatic, we don't like that. When Eliezer Hagadol, who was such a Gadol, they called him Eliezer Hagadol. He said, God said, I'm right, and I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to get a voice, an echo from the heaven. He's going to say, You're right. He said, You say, You're right. He said, God, mind your own business. He gave it to us. Even if you're right, and he was right, because once an oven is shattered and it doesn't have a use for the shards, that oven is kosher, or tabor. The problem is, the Beit in Haggadol had the right to define the dinim muflaim. Dinim muflaim. And when Shimon and Gamaliel went and insulted someone else, now, are you allowed to insult other people in Jewish law? No. We have a rabbi here called Rabbi Shach who did that. I, I, I won't vote for Naftali Bennett, but he's not a Russia. He wanted to draft people into the yeshiva, into the army. The Gemara in Sota says everybody serves in the army. The only mistake that Lapid and Bennett made, he wanted to draft the men. According to the Gemara, you have to draft the women too. That's what it says. Uh, but to Lapid, I would excuse you, he didn't have a religious background. But Naftali Bennett should have known that. Uh, comes Rabbi Yavai Yosef, he said the Rasha. And if I were there, I would say, Chacham Avadi, you should. Ma Rishato al Ezah Halacha Bikorish Abal Pehu Bavar. The Torah means we can argue even with the Abishta. And you don't insult people. I believe you are wrong. There was a very famous rabbi who was a personal friend of mine who said that uh, we, women today would rather be single than unhappily married. That's not the Chazak in the time of the Gemara. And a very big God, as opposed to a little God, said, uh, no, it's a Chazak in the Gemara, that's eternal. No, the Hanhagot, the Takanot, and the Gzerot are eternal. Hazakas are not law. They're description. Yes, sir. This is five Oh. I'm enjoying it. Thank you for your chamsa. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what should have been answered. The correct response, if you disagree, is, Sir, I believe you made an error, and here is why. Come and say, you are a Pikoros. Violates three laws. And it violates the law. The curve you use, the curve against which we bounce you. And the third one. The only person who gets inside of your head, inside of you, is the guy who's upstairs. Therefore, don't judge lest you be judged. Matthew 7, Tarot chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, are there any questions or questions? Uh, yes. Just quickly, so you mentioned that uh, the, this, uh, this uh, notion of the time of the Allah of the place of itself is in in, in Hermeneutic literature. Yes, that's in Dine Mamanas and Yerushalmi. In Easter of Ahetra, it does not apply but they apply it anyway. For example, if you live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and you have a field, are you required to have lechet and shikha, pale lechet and shikha? If you live in Cincinnati, Ohio, you have a field. According to, according to the halacha, you have to, but the Ramah says you don't. Oh, okay. Ramah says, do you follow the Ramah? Uh, yeah. If we follow the Ramah, we wear tzil and chalamahay. So in this country, <coughs> we don't follow the Ramah. <coughs> what, it's amazing. Okay. They tell you, to, hey, kidneys, you have to be careful. But we're in film, which is last I checked, is still a derise that, that you don't have to do. Now, I don't know where their heads are. <laughs> I'm retired, my pension is stable, so I don't care, they can't fire me. But, so I'm free to say what I think. But just a little bit of logic. When the halacha says this, the Ramah says, you can clap and change, the, change, the law change with the times. How do you say in English the law changes with the times? Reform. <laughs> 
The Gemara says X, and with not Arminat. Arba Tzvichim Lahoda. It says, Nashim Chayavot Birchat Azimun. Women have to say Birchat Azimun. Now, there's a Tosafot that says, that's not Arminat. You're right, it's not your marriage, it's your mitzvah. Why is it Armin, not Armin Hak? Because we don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said. Now, if you live in, live in the yeshiva, you're not to attack them because they're written in the book. Which book? We don't pass them at the Rambam. So, fine, maybe the Rambam's wrong. Tell me why he's wrong and you're right. Why is your interpretation better? And I will conclude with this. When I was given a position to teach halach in a place called Stern College, a very strict area, that's what they call Stern College. <laughs> Uh, sorry. <laughs> and I was teaching Torah Shabbat Peh, and my Rebbe, a Sephardic gentleman, said, you know how to teach Torah Shabbat about the women. So I said, the Gemara says, not the Lashon of Easter. It says, Kolam Malamei Bitoki Ilamam Malamei Te Fluid. And that's not a mitzvah. It's a description. Description is not prescription. It's not written. He said, you're disagreeing with the Rishonim, but you're accurate. It's a defensible reading of the Pshat. Then I... Will subsequently learn, because I learned at a place where they teach us the JTS, where it says in Tosef the Brachot, chapter 2, women are allowed to study Mishnah, Agada, Vahalacha. So the Torah Shabbat Pet said it's mutter explicitly, not by inference. I went to the she didn't teach that in Yeshiva. When I taught that to my girls in Hill Yeshiva, when I was criticized by someone, you're teaching Mishnah instead of women! What is it called, Mission Impossible? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no. Read the Tosef with me. This is the principal yelled at me. Why did you tell him that? Why, I had answered the question, but you made the Chachamim look like they're idiots. <laughs> Victory. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs>